Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. The purpose of this press conference is uh, to announce a city county gun violence reduction initiative. Um, before I get started, I want to recognize uh, a couple people from who we consider to be influential community leaders um, that have taken time out of their day to be here, and that's Mary um, Eckelberger Johnson and Mr. Howard Johnson from the Greenview community. Uh, representing Eau Claire Ministries, um, Mr. Kevin Speaks, um, and Willie Leakes from the Belmont community. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we're obviously joined by um, our state and federal partners uh, that we'll talk about in a minute, and then um, staff from the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department. So what we want to talk to today briefly is um, uh, about a problem that's plaguing our community, and that's gun violence. Uh, what you see in front of you today is is um, a, a snapshot, and I and when I say snapshot, I mean a very small snapshot of just um, the degree of um, of the problem we have. This represents um, again a snapshot of the first quarter of 2018. Um, the the police department and the sheriff will talk about um, uh, some of the sheriff's departments. Um, findings thus far, but we've seized uh, 166 guns so far just in the first quarter, and this is a, this is a representation of that. Um, you can see uh, it ranges from handguns to what we consider to be uh, high-powered rifles and assault weapons, um, and these are taken off the streets of Columbia and, uh, and the streets in the county as well. Um, we're announcing a, a, what essentially is a three-prong approach. Um, this is combining um, our efforts very similar to what we've seen to be very successful with the Midlands Gang Task Force and um, we're taking that collaborative approach uh, with our narcotics folks, our CID people and our uh, fugitive and warrants um, investigators and it's going to be very spe specific and targeted. Uh, it's going to be intelligence and data driven, technology driven and again uh, emphasizing collaboration and partnerships. We're going to be focusing on certain people. Uh, this isn't a, a drag net where we're throwing a big, a, a big net. We're focusing on uh, certain people, people we consider to be our most prolific gun crime offenders. Um, it's not coincidental that those gun crime offenders are also the ones breaking in cars, stealing cars, and then committing robberies. Um, it's all connected, and unfortunately, um, many of them are what we consider to be youthful offenders, um, which is, is more scary. We see time and time again um, our young adults carrying firearms, they get involved in an altercation um, and somebody pulls a gun and shots are fired and people are hit and property is damaged. Uh, we already have a number of things underway. Our, our, we, we always talk about our award-winning uh, Midlands Gang Task Force. Um, we've started home visits um, in partnership with the Department of Corrections Youthful Offender Program, uh, Juvenile Justice Services and Triple P where our patrol officers and deputies are visiting homes, um, making sure that people are at home when they're supposed to be home and when they're not holding them to account. Uh, we also have um, had Operation Real Time up and running for some time, and that is a point of arrest, accelerated federal arrest and prosecution initiative. Um, and again, that is targeting people that are felons and are found in possession of firearms. And that's a seven day a week, 24 hour a day program. When those uh, people that meet that criteria are, are, um, are found to be in our custody, then our, our federal partners respond to the scene and, and, and again start that accelerated process. So uh, I'll point out that clearance rates are not just uh, representative of the police department, they represent our community. And that's really what we're, we're asking for is um, community partnerships. As I mentioned, uh, focusing on the first quarter that we just morning, that, that we just um, that we just finished, uh, we had 59 gun-related incidents in in the city of Columbia. Um, we had 19 people actually hit by gunfire, five people murdered, and uh, there's some striking um, striking points to to this um, thus far. Um, of our victims of gunfire, um, 
100% are African American and primarily um, African American between the ages of 17 and 25. Uh, and they're predominantly male, about 89%. As I said, we've seized 166 firearms. We've received 484 um, reports of shots fired. But what I would point out with that is 75%, we know that 75% of shots fired calls go unreported. So that's a that's a pretty staggering number, and that's that's ahead of ahead of pace from what we saw last year. Of all firearms and, and shell casings that are recovered when we respond to shots fired calls and um, people hit, we test fire weapons, submit casings found into uh, the um, what is referred to as the Nibin system, and. Of 40 firearms that we seized and entered in, into the system, um, the system told us back that 16 of them are involved in multiple crimes, uh, and this was last year. Um, but what that should tell you is we have 16 of those guns we know are involved in, in multiple crimes, and the rest of those 40 guns are still out on the street being used over and over again. In this first quarter this year, um, our knob and entries have resulted in six additional firearms being used in multiple crimes. So um, there certainly is a need for um, this initiative and, and collaboration. And again, um, we feel like that um, this is a, um, the groups responsible for this violence is, is, is not widespread, it's targeted. And that's, that's what we want to be is very targeted in our approach, Chair. What we found out is that we've got a small number of people who are committing most of these crimes. Um, they're the ones doing the multiple shootings. Um, they're using the same guns. So um, we're going to create a task force for the next 60 days that's going to focus on these small number of people who's out here committing most of these crimes. Um, I guess you'd say we're targeting them. We're going to go after them. Uh, we're going to make sure that um, if they break the law that we're going to be there to arrest them. We're not going to let them continue just to go out through our community and do multiple shootings. Um, the county's the same as the city. Our numbers mirror exactly what Chief Holbrook's numbers are. We have a shooting every day. That doesn't mean somebody's shot every day, but every day there's a shooting that goes on in the Midlands of Columbia. Uh, there's shots fired. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times people get hit, and what we're finding out, the people who are getting shot are not cooperating with us. So they're not helping us catch those who are doing these shootings. So we've got to put more focus on catching those responsible for the, the shooting. So for the next 60 days, um, between the City of Columbia, Richland County Sheriff's Department, and our federal and state partners, we're gonna form a task force, just like our Midlands Gang Task Force, and we're gonna target those who are out here committing these crimes. Um, two weekends ago, the shooting in Greenview and the shooting at Columbia Mall, I think was it. That, that, that was what really told Chief and I that enough is enough. And we made phone calls between each other and said we've got to do something um, until we come up with this task force. This is our answer. But we also want to do an educational part of it. We're finding out that a lot of these guns that are used in these shootings are stolen during car break-ins. We've got to convince our citizens not to leave your guns in your car. When you get home at night, don't leave your pistol in the car. Take it in the house with you because we've got these hoodlums out here who go around neighborhoods and they break in cars and they steal the guns. That's the source of most of the guns that we're seeing that are being used or being stolen because we're leaving guns in our cars. So we've got to do the education part and we've got to do the enforcement part. We've got to do both of it. Um, a Midlands Gang Task Force is just proven to be so successful and we're going to use that same concept to go after those that are in our community that are shooting our community up, shooting into cars, getting into gunfights at Columbia Mall, um, robbing people, stealing cars. You know, we've got to put a stop to it. Enough's enough. And for the next 60 days, this task force is going to focus on that. Mayor. Sure. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Sheriff. I want to um, say thank you to uh, all these men and women uh, standing up here and the uh, incredible men and women of the Columbia Police Department, the Richmond County Sheriff's Department. They're being led by two of the best law enforcement executives in the entire country, and it's reflected in the great work that all these men and women do every single day. I want to laud this as, as exactly what it is. This is smart, precision policing. Following the data 
and working hard every single day to make sure that we do our number one job, to keep the peace and make sure we, we create safe communities where people can live, work, play, worship, and, and, and raise families. That's our job to protect the, the, the life, health, and safety of all of our citizens. The data doesn't lie. And it, it shows us that there's work, more work that we can do and do together through strong regional partnerships that will make our communities that much safer. I want to thank uh, Sheriff Lott, thank Chief Holbrook for again working together, continuing this fantastic partnership that's focused on keeping the Midlands safe. Uh, we must be unapologetic about cracking down on those who would seek to victimize our family and our friends and our neighbors uh, any day of the week. And we will be just that, unapologetic. We're doing all the other things we're supposed to do to create a, a safe community, making sure that all of our young people have opportunities to live and, and, and prosper and grow up, grow up to their God-given uh, potential. But when they cross the line and victimize their neighbors, our friends and families, then we've got to make sure that we crack down and say enough isn't enough. So I want to thank again uh, Chief Holbrook and Sheriff Lott for the leadership. Thank these men and women who put on the uniforms every single day and run towards danger. Uh, together, we're going to work to get some more of these illegal guns off the street. We're going to work, again, on smart policies, precision policing that helps make our community safe. Thank you.